and I was like, no, you're probably right, but on the other hand, you can actually customize it and do things that you couldn't do in the war anyway, and I was like, I'm not interested in this game. Hello, what's up? Today, we have actually this really, really nice setup because DICE provided us with news both earlier this week with like the development update and today actually with the trailer for the new season season two master of arms so i thought it would be just about right to go through all this news <laughs> first of all i'm going to go through the or we are going to go through the development update that dice held uh, i think yeah a couple of days ago and then we're going to watch the trailer for season two and we're going to break it down a little bit and i mean it's a lot of information in both of these uh, so i'm going to try and keep it as narrow as possible so ever since the start of battlefield 242 a lot of players have been nagging about the specialist issue and personally i i don't really have any issue with specialists uh, they are <laughs> i don't know they are what they are okay let's think about when 1942 was like a new fresh game so you you do classes i mean you have uh, fixed loadouts you have for them simple it doesn't take that much time it's fairly easy i mean it doesn't take the focus away from the all the vehicles and stuff which were new at that time and then things evolved and in battlefield 2 you could actually start to switch some weapons uh, you could unlock like new weapons and you could use them instead they added like more options more customization and then uh, if not before when you get to battlefield 5 you have a complete weapon salad some love it some hate it you know my dad actually was like that tank shouldn't be in that battle and i was like no you're probably right but on the other hand you can actually customize it and do things that you couldn't do in the war anyway and i was like i'm not interested in this game this is actually not a update for season two i just want to point out so we are not getting classes in season two or at least not in like this revamped way uh, they are coming in season three because dice wants to take the time to go through it and make it right that's what they say so what they actually what they have done so far is they're, they're presenting like a concept that they take the specialists, they bundle them into different classes. You have Assault, Recon, Support and Engineer. And then you have certain traits that different classes can use. But you also have the specialist ability like Grapple Hook or McKay. So you kind of mix it a little bit together. Basically what you have is the exact same as you have now. But you, you can't pick from all the gadgets and stuff. You can only pick for a certain range that fits your... Like if you're assault, you can pick the things that fits assault. Uh, and if you're recon, you can pick things that fits recon, for instance, spawn beacon and stuff. We're kind of taking a step back to, I don't know, something similar to Battlefield 5. But then again, each specialist, it's not, it's not like a, only a costume. It actually comes with some traits and abilities. You have assault gadget. You see here on the right side, med pen. You can pick a primary weapon, you can pick a secondary weapon and then you actually have uh, you can still pick a nade and you can still pick some generic gadgets so this means that if this stays in the way that is right now i suppose you you can basically have two gadgets and a throwable or three gadgets if you want you can actually equip one more than you can do today because you have the assault gadget that all assault can do that is a difference. Will it make a whole lot of difference? Is this something completely different than today? No, it's not really. I'm, I mean, no. I've gotten quite accustomed to it. I can pick whatever I want to do basically whatever I want. So I will actually miss that part a little bit. If you paid attention in the early versions of 2042, you could actually see this like assault mark on, on some specialists and you can see recon and support. I mean, they had this like divided all already. It's not completely just pull out in a few months or whatever it is this kind of existed as a backup thought but still they had to go through a lot of information and um i don't know think a lot i guess 
this is not for season two this is for season three so don't expect anything of this for season two they will come first in season three and it might not even look like this we have already seen this they have revamped the faces uh, they're going to continue that journey different postures voice lines and stuff it all adds up to a little bit more gritty feeling of the game which is a good thing i think they add a few new weapons in the season two and we're going to watch that later in the trailer but they also add these like vault weapons as they say so they bring weapons from different earlier eras of uh, battlefield from bad company 2 Battlefield 3 and whatever not whatnot you can use them in uh, 2042 as well you need to complete this to unlock the rifle basically what you do is uh, you, you go inside let's say portal and you use m16a3 and you get a lot of kills or you can use the scar then you unlock the weapon and you can use it in normal battlefield 242 games but you can't change the skin you can't change uh, like sights uh, under barrel and all that stuff and you can't unlock like tier one and stuff so it's only so you can use it the other things that I, and I think is most important or most interesting is actually the maps. And here you see Kaleidoscope that uh, they released, Kaleidoscope 2.0. Especially in this area here and the one shown just before, I, I still think it's quite fun. I mean, they made it better. Much better. It's, it's not perfect. It's not the best map that we have in Battlefield 2042, but it's better. So it's a step in the right direction. In Season 2, we're actually going to get two maps. First of all, we're going to get this entire new map stranded that we're going to see in the trailer. And then we get a rework on Renewal that we knew since before. And then we also get a rework of Orbital. And to be honest, I was a little bit surprised about the Orbital rework because I don't think that's the worst map. I think Hourglass by far is the worst map uh, in the game. I think we're going to start with Renewal. Yeah, uh, and they've so shown some of these before. And you can here can really see if you look to the right you have the old picture and uh, if you look to the left you have the new picture and i mean the difference is just huge you you have from an open area with pretty much nothing uh to this like uh, uh, somewhat defendable area uh, i would say i mean they try to make it a little bit more like there's some military there to actually defend i suppose this layout is fine i mean it is a power plant uh, but yeah we, uh, i think everyone agrees that we really want this like military area with covers and stuff so now you can actually push into the objective and uh, you can actually defend the objective this is how it used to be and uh, you see it uh, this in, in a lot of the battlefield 2042 maps actually it's not only renewal it's not only kaleidoscope or i mean it's basically all of them that you have this one line of defense and if you are outside it's really hard to get in because it's very open and if you are inside and the enemy reaches this like border and they take control of this border then you have basically nothing left it's just a massive pit of death you can only defend to that extent and then you need to run 100 200 meters in open space this is a difference in like the fundamentals because here you when we look at the new picture we have a lot of more defensible stuff inside the objective uh, and we also have some on the way to the objective but primarily the difference is that at least i think so that there are stuff inside uh, so this is the same place but from a different view like looking within and again i mean I think they have extended the border a little bit, so the objective is uh, probably this entire area that we see is the objective area. But the, uh, as I said, the, there are more uh, things inside the objective area, so you can actually have a fight going on inside the objective, which I think is really huge. Uh, and here it was very open, now they make it made it more defensible. In here it was really... <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it speaks for itself. So you can actually defend the point from up here. Uh, right now, if you play the map as it is right now, you basically need to be within this room to, to defend it. Uh, this is a very spe special objective because you actually have objective area here and you have objective area in there. So it's split in two. Let's go to Orbital. That's... So this is new stuff. Uh, this is the oldest map of Battlefield 2042. They had it in beta and uh, since then it, it really hasn't changed anything like major. 
Um, so you have more stuff basically everywhere. That's the main, like the main theme. In the K2 area it makes it harder to just go straight through with the cars. This area is really, really interesting because this is a new area and it looks really Jurassic Park. I mean, if, if there's a T-Rex somewhere, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, they got to put the Easter egg in there. I mean, it doesn't look much, does it? But it depends all about how, what they've done inside. And we don't get to see that really, do we? No, we don't get to see that. So, um, yeah, okay. <laughs> we just hop on to the next part. But uh, I'm really interested in that uh, previous part, as we said. So we have the tunnels in here. And right now the tunnels are just transport. Uh, but they have remade this a lot. So the, it's quite defendable. I'm not really sure how the objectives are going to uh, hold together. But basically, to if, if you looked at the previous pictures to keep that area safe, you need to put up a good fight in the tunnels here. And I think this area looks great. But if it's not connected to any objectives, it, will, it won't work. So they have completely just destroyed the runway. I think it's cool to see, but after a while when I see it, I, I start to think how come there are so many destroyed tanks and so many like everything is just obliterated in this area and the rest of the area is like fresh new military defense stations. How, how does that work? So it's a super cool thing to have. And it obviously feels this like uh, it makes it hard to navigate. It brings more cover to everyone. So it's super cool. Nothing is broken here. Why does the landing field look like uh, there was like World War 3 there? And again, we see the uh, like runway and stuff. Uh, and another thing that I think is a little bit... Uh, I mean, though that tank and that tank, they, they are quite... It looks like a copy paste, doesn't it? I think now that we have seen new maps and we have seen the remade uh, kaleidoscope map, uh, me personally at least have learned that I shouldn't be too critical be before I actually get to, to play it for a while. All right, so uh, let's go through this a little bit. So first of all, we have the... Um, They're planning something big. A little bit story, this story, that. You see in the background, uh, this is Crawford. Crawford, Crawford. Did I say that right? Anyway, the Brit. So this is the new specialist that we have in Battlefield 2042. He is a Brit, he's a double agent, former uh, MI6, and he starts to deal in weapons. If you read the report, it feels that he has gone bad a little bit, but I guess he just joined the notepads or something. The, the entire story goes like MI6 and CIA, this and that, and uh, there's good people and bad people, and they try to fight this also. And we unfortunately get to see nothing of it from in the game so far. I mean, is there another game coming up with this, or are they going to introduce some other things in, into the game 2042, or what's happening? I don't know. Anyway, we had this dude with a mushy beard and the sunglass and he looks actually really really good he doesn't look that much disney as uh, mckay or he is a support or a medic if you are a more old school battlefield player and that's basically what we know so far later in this video we see one of his abilities when he brings up the minigun and it just goes brrr. and here we have some ai because they like to show ai uh, and yeah he is absolute badass and here we go red collar master of arms so this is the new map, Stranded. Uh, it's a uh, quite large area outside, I would say. I mean, if you look at this, uh, I, I suppose you have some objective here, possibly one there, and maybe somewhere over here. And then you have the ship where I guess they have at least two or three areas. If you go outside, it's probably going to be where vehicles thrive. But it's inside the ship that I think is the most interesting because they made an entire world inside it, looks like at least. And it seems to be mostly infantry based. Though, you can actually pop the hatches, it seems, and you could go down with the chopper. And it would be super interesting if you could actually close the hatch again and just have a sorry ass chopper inside. This is new heavy um, uh, vehicle. This is inside the boat, uh, and that ability i think judging by how it looks i would guess that it's like a 
on cooldown possibly you can place this like radio antenna radar antenna thingy and it can show all the enemies in a certain area maybe that's my guess i haven't read anything about it it's just a blind guess but it could be of course yeah this is another new thing so we haven't seen this in battlefield 2042 before but uh, we have a flashbang uh, i was actually thinking the other day when will they introduce flashbangs not so battlefield-ish maybe but it's definitely something that fits with specialists and all that so you have this little bit darker inside area and then you have flashbang i would be sorry if you can't flash your own teammates because that would be so fun <laughs> So if you look at the back wall here, you have the uh, symbol that we have in the easter egg. If you haven't gotten it already, make sure to go around on the maps and until you find this beeping box. Stand close to it and you get this uh, season 2 easter egg card. That's really pretty. But I, I mean, you see the inside area of the ship and you see this dark area for instance. It feels a little bit like they try to motivate why people should use flashlight on the weapon. Because I think that's the absolute worst uh, thing you can have in the entire game. I think. This is the only the only equipment that you can have on your weapon that actually makes it worse than before. So this is the uh, new dude's minigun that you can use. And as you see, there is this like area that is kind of supposed to feel like, oh, I have an open area so I can see something and I can use my weapon. But I, I mean, obviously it's this open area so people can kill you. Outside, and when I saw this first time, I was thinking, why do they show a tornado here? What, what's up with a tornado? I mean, we have seen tornadoes in, in Battlefield 2042 so many times before. Why Why did they bring a tornado in, the, in this trailer? I, that's old news, right? What's better than one tornado? Well, obviously, two tornadoes. Yeah, two tornadoes in the same map on the same map at the same time that's obviously huge i think we can expect at least on this map to have multiple tornadoes i suppose two but what if we have three i mean where's the limit so first of all assault rifles they might be overpowered and i'm going to enjoy it for a long while and uh, maybe they will stay that for the entire season maybe they will get nerfed maybe they'll get buffed i mean you don't really know people want new stuff they want to use it if, if it's worse than what you already had, well, why would you use it? So they kind of need to always up the game, which kind of creates this loop of introducing an overpowered weapon, nerfing it, and then introduce a new overpowered weapon, and you go all over again. One assault rifle, one secondary pistol or whatever, uh, and this LMG. Then you have new vehicles, the uh, RZR, and you have the heavy... Uh, evil yeah ram let's let's call it ram heavy ground vehicle ram yeah i think this ram is going to be somewhat like the bolt it was in the beginning it's just a hunch and then we have charlie crawford um uh, the double agent the brit and that's actually everything we get is it really is it like a good season i mean we we don't know that i don't know that at least I, i'm going to have to try and see uh, but i mean it it didn't really come as a it wasn't a surprise that we didn't get more content uh, they kind of said it before or had been like indicating that but it's at least more than in season one and uh, hopefully it will manage to fill the time for the entire season i don't know all right all right time to go to bed yes it is well bye boy Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.